So this is MSX Basic. This is what loads as soon as you turn on any MSX. They all have it built into ROM. And you can do anything from Basic that you would expect. That. But because this has the magical cartridge in it, or maybe this is built into the onboard ROM, I'm not sure, you could type this incantation. Call music. If I type it right, call music. Now we're in the MIDI synthesizer control. This is a very basic MIDI production environment. You can actually record directly into this and it supports multiple tracks. It's not a very good interface, but it lets you play around with the machine and do some basics. So I've hooked up my Yamaha CP uh, through the MIDI output to the MIDI input of this machine. And then I have the sound modules audio going to my capture device. See how it sounds. So this defaults to setting number 13, but number one is brass. And then of course we have not a general MIDI set, but we have a whole bunch of different patches. couple things you may have noticed if you're musically inclined. First, all these patches so far sound fairly similar. That sort of comes down to limitations of FM synthesis. It can produce a lot of different sounds, certainly, but most of the interesting ones, the ones that sound close enough to instruments that they can be considered musical by most people, basically take the form of some kind of bell sound. There's other stuff, but by and large, it's some kind of bell sound. Something that goes wow in both filter frequency and pitch. This is a gross oversimplification, but all the same, it's kind of true. There really hasn't been much of a difference between the sound of the brass and the sound of the guitar, except that one is a slightly more acute attack. After that, they kind of sound the same. The E piano and the guitar are nearly indistinguishable. But this was sort of typical of FM synthesis, that all the sounds were kind of very FM. Everybody knew a DX7, um, Yamaha's flagship FM synth as soon as they heard it. Everyone who knew what it was. Anyone who didn't know what it was still knew it was that sound, and it was the sound of the 80s. And to a lesser extent, it was the sound of the 90s as well, when the AdLib sound card came out, which had pretty much the same chip on it that was in those keyboards, just a much more reduced of function version. Not to mention the Genesis and a couple other game consoles. This sound got around, and it got associated with a lot of things, but they all sound incredibly dated now. Now, if you're a huge nerd like me, then that's not necessarily a problem. Now, another thing you may have noticed is that this is a proper synthesizer. It is velocity sensitive. I don't have a pitch bend wheel here, but I imagine that would work as well. Anyway, as stated, this form of synthesis is very good at particular sounds, particularly bell sounds. 
So for instance, this is a vibraphone. It doesn't sound like a real vibraphone necessarily, but it sounds like a reasonable facsimile of one, whereas the brass and the strings sounded nothing like their real world counterparts. Likewise, if we advance to the xylophone, it sounds terrible. Never heard a xylophone sound like that. The harpsichord, likewise, does not sound very inspiring. Now let's listen to a church bell. That is a little more impressive. FM opens up the possibility of making completely unrealistic sounds very easily. Easy being a relative term. Programming these things is extremely hard. I don't even think this has a programming interface. I think I have to get one of the actual Yamaha software carts to do that. So this isn't the best FM synthesizer in the world. I mean, I have a couple keyboards in my house that actually do better just with their preset patches. However, I don't think it was supposed to be. I think this is mostly just a demo app to let you play around with the machine. You were expected to buy Yamaha's better cartridge-based synthesizer software, not to mention their sequencer software and so on. I think they had something like eight or ten different cartridges that could be used for this. So I'm going to look into that, see if I can get that loaded up on my flash card or even get the real thing so I can get a little bit more out of this thing. But for now, I'm just going to show you a couple more features in the inbuilt software. So as you can see, there's potentially four different instruments here, but we can't select any of the other ones right now. And the reason for that is there's nothing assigned to them. So if we arrow down here, you can see there's quite a few options here, although they are fairly basic. If we set this to MIDI channel 1, you can see it's automatically assigned two of the available eight notes of polyphony to MIDI channel 1 on the second instrument. So that, since MIDI channel 1 is also driving the first instrument, that means that when I press a key now, you might not be able to tell, but it's playing both of those patches at once. So if I go back up to the top and change one of those patches, I'll show you one of my favorites a snare drum, and an e-piano. Obviously I could stack this up to four instruments, but then I'd only have two notes of polyphony. As it is, I believe what happens is that it'll only play the snare on the first two keys I hold down, and then on the remaining two keys, uh, and then on the remaining four keys, it'll play just the e-piano. Well, that wasn't true, so when I hit the next keys, it must have canceled the snare, but it had already ended, so we can't hear that it's canceling it. So that's actually a pretty good combo. So now if we go down and take a look here, we can also set it to a split keyboard, in which case it works like this. It automatically splits the first two instruments across the keyboard. You can move the split point, but I don't remember the keys to do it. We can also turn on sustain. Right there, you've probably noticed what just happened there. Now, I've never heard this before. When you turn this sustain feature on and then play several notes at once, there's a tendency for the FM synth to go into some sort of weird self-oscillation. Uh, this may get loud, so be sure to turn your volume down or pull your headphones off if you're sensitive to loud noises. That sounds normal enough. But you can hear it starting to get weird, weirder, see, it just gets super weird. So that's new behavior for an FM synth for me. Anyway, that's about the size of it. Uh, this thing's pretty cool, I think. Um, hopefully gonna do more videos with it in the future, but I just mostly wanted to get it up on YouTube so I can show off what I just got.
and I know some people were curious about how it worked, so hopefully this answered most of your questions. Also, don't be like me. Make sure when you're hooking up DIN connectors that you read the pins in the right order. Make sure you do it with every connector. And above all else, test it before you solder it. I could have saved so much effort by hooking this up with test clips first. Why didn't I do that? There was no reason not to do that. Anyway, thanks for joining me. Have a nice weekend and Merry Christmas.